go. Well, I hope you're blessed today. I hope you're ready for more. Are you ready for more? We've been learning about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, so this week we've had some snow. And uh, uh, a couple of days ago, what, three, four, when we had kind of the big the dump here, four, five, six inches of snow, right across the road from my, uh, my new house is a lot where uh, um, a person parks semi-tractor trucks, tractor trailers. And so uh, it snowed and all that and all the snow. And, and I went to bed, got up in the morning, and, and here's a, a truck had not kind of backed in like normal, but just kind of pulled in off the road and, and parked, boom. And I thought, you know, obviously all the snow, he didn't want to get back in there. But at the same time, I'm looking, thinking, ooh, he's in trouble. <laughs> you know, six, eight inches of fresh snow, and he has sat in that all night. And so we get up in the morning, and, and uh, this is the beauty of, of city living now. I'm out with my little shovel, just clearing my sidewalk. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. And, um, and, and so they, some people come out there, and, and they've got a four-wheeler. They're trying to push some snow with a four-wheeler. There's two people with shovels, and they're trying to dig this tractor trailer out. And uh, they spent, like, the whole morning trying to end it stuck, you know. And uh, it was fairly flat lot, but, you know, it sat all night, and there was just enough snow that it wasn't moving. And uh, they're shoveling, they're digging, they're pushing. Um, and eventually they got it out somehow. I didn't stick around all day to watch the festivities. Uh, but it, it triggered a memory somewhere in the recesses of my mind. <laughs> I remember as a, a probably a 10 or 12-year-old kid, I remember on a snowy, we used to get a lot of snow. I remember the good old days. And, and on a snowy, snowy night, I remember this uh, racket at our house and knocking on the door. It was late at night. And, and it, and, and then, I don't remember, but it was at midnight, something like that. And this, this guy who we, we knew, um, who was a farmer and a truck driver, um, was standing there knocking on our door at midnight and said he had, he had uh, a snowstorm and had run off the road and his truck was stuck. And worse than that, a uh, super nice guy and a guy we knew and we liked, but he also kind of had this um, um, occasionally, let's, he, he, would, he would stretch the boundaries of what they would call weight limits on trucking. So he, he was a hauled steel hauler, and thus was the reason he was driving way off of normal roads lay late at night, because he was trying to get home with this load, way overloaded, full of steel. And, um, and so not only was it a, a truck, tractor, trailer, but it was a truck probably weighing well over 100,000 pounds uh, full of steel off the road in the snow. This is a problem. And, but this is what sticks in my mind as a, as a kid, because uh, that's like cool when, when you're 10 years old. And, but I, can I promise you this? We didn't go out there with a, a four-wheeler nor shovels. We did kind of go out there with a four-wheeler, but it was a John Deere, you know, 500 horsepower with four sets of dual wheels and a four-inch diameter tow rope. And uh, we hooked onto that bad boy and poof, popped it out of the ditch. And I thought, what a difference from these four folks across the road trying to dig out an 18-wheeler with their hand shovels versus you hook on with a, a four-wheel drive tractor and the right equipment and you can just get the job done in an instant. Now, here's my thought. Did they get the truck across the road out? Yes, they did. Can you do things like, can you shovel your driveway by hand? Of course you can. Can you, when I was a, a high schooler, and maybe some of you did this, when I was young, much more energetic and a little more foolish, right? We would just throw shovels in the back of our four by four trucks and go out and try to get stuck. And, you know, and then just dig ourselves out and go do it again. Like it was fun. That, you know. Can you do that? Yes. It's, but are there better ways? My most favorite, I'm sorry I'm off track, but it just, I have to share this. My favorite pulling out of the snow story was uh, the Schwann's truck. I remember they, they would drive around the neighborhoods with their trucks and, and they had food and frozen goods. The Schwann's truck got struck right in front of our house. It was a happy day for me because uh, no one was home. I got the tractor, I pulled him out, and he gave me my, fr my own pick from the whole truck of ice cream. <laughs> and... Uh, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> We're talking about spiritual gifts, and that's, 
besides just being fun. That's why I tell you these stories, because we can do life and ministry without them. But it's kind of like using your hand shovel. It's doable, and you're not a bad person. And maybe it's good exercise. But the fact is, when you have big things to do for the kingdom, you want to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, you want to see addictions broken, you want to see communities changed, you want to see strongholds demolished, you can, you can come at that from a, a natural standpoint and do your best. But God said, I've made available some serious horsepower that can get the job done a lot more efficiently. And we've talked about uh, the verbal gifts, the words of knowledge, the words of wisdom, the, the messages in tongues and interpretation. Uh, the, the, those are the inspirational gifts, or the, the words of uh, prophecy, tongues, interpretation. We talked about the uh, inspirational gifts, the knowledge gifts, the informational gifts, which are word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Today, I, I like to call these, or a lot of people do, the power gifts. Whereas the verbal gifts kind of inspire us and help us, we need those. Life and death are in the tongue. Much is accomplished with those powerful words. Uh, and sometimes in ministry, nothing helps more than those insightful knowledge gifts. Uh, the, 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 that word of knowledge, that word of wisdom. But sometimes we just need to get things done. And sometimes there's a space for what we call these power gifts. And so I want to read for you the text once, one more time. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14 says, Follow the way of love, eagerly desire spiritual gifts. Eagerly desire. I'm, I've been bringing this up every week, but it, boy, does this challenge me. Even if it just said desire, I would say most of us would say, yeah, yeah, I would like that. But when they add that word eagerly, we have to ask the question, does that describe me? Now, it doesn't say eagerly desire a new crossbow. Eagerly desire a new rifle. Now, those are good things, and there's nothing wrong with eagerly desiring them. But, so we can imagine what that eagerly desire those new shoes. I can't believe I have four daughters. I cannot believe how much tennis shoes cost. I'm glad they're pretty. I'm glad they look nice. But could we be just a little less trendy? That stuff's expensive. Eagerly desire some new Nikes. Eagerly desire. Uh, we know what that looks like. But does it describe us as it relates to the kingdom, to God, and especially to the spiritual gifts? Eagerly desire. So to one are given through the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another uh, uh, faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another speaking in tongues, and to another interpretation. So what I call revelation gifts or information gifts, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, the inspiration or verbal gifts, prophecy, tongues, and interpretation. And what we're going to talk about today, power gifts, healing, miracles, and faith. What I want you to know, again, like almost all of these, you really can't get supernatural knowledge except from God in this manner. But we can operate in some of them in multiple ways. Let's say prophecy. There's, every believer can hear from God. You have that privilege, and you can share that word in season to sustain the weary. You can share that, and that's, that's at its core, that's prophetic. You hearing from God and you sharing it to encourage somebody, that's the core of prophecy. Uh, there are people who serve in a, a role of a prophet. You see those in the Bible, you see those in the Old Testament. We don't see them so much now, but I don't think that was God's design as much as the, new, the church, modern church doesn't know what to do with prophets. <laughs> But I think God has a role for the, the prophetic voice in the, in the church today. But then there is the gift 
that time where God just comes in a moment, in a meeting, in a gathering, and, and, and inspires that word, the gift of prophecy. And so these three today, miracles, healings, and faith, all can come in a few different ways. We all have measures of faith. We're going to talk about that. We can all be active in healing. Jesus came preaching, teaching, and healing. And we can all be a part in miracles. Isn't that good news? So what I want to, but the Bible says, eagerly desire these spiritual gifts. These are one of the ways God manifests these these signs and wonders is through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the first I want to talk about is faith. Divine certainty from God to believe uh, for the impossible. Now, there is, there is like natural faith. There, there's a lot of kind of faith. You, all of you came in this morning, as far as I can tell, every single one of you sat on a chair, and you believed when you sat on that chair, it would hold you up. <laughs> it is theoretically possible that it would not. But that's just natural faith. I, I believed when I turned the key in my car that it would start. I believe, those, so there's just things we believe. It, we, it, it's not a guarantee, but based on our experience, we have a good measure of faith that it's going to happen. But there's saving faith where we trust God for our salvation. Uh, it, is, it, is, uh, it is a step of faith to believe in the unseen, to trust that, that the Jesus that we can't see with our physical eyes truly went to the cross for us, and that when we surrender our life to His Lordship, there really is forgiveness of sins and adoption in heaven. That's, that's a step of faith. We are saved by grace through faith. Romans 12 said there's something called the measure of faith. Romans 12, 3, For I say through the grace given to me that everyone among you, everyone, should not think of himself more highly than he ought, think soberly, because God has given to each one a measure of faith. So we have a a measure of faith that has been given to uh, each one of us that we can work with and develop and mature. So we, we have faith. We have saving faith. We have natural faith. And God has given us a measure of faith to live and operate and trust and pray and believe and, and serve. But sometimes God would give us this thing called the gift of faith. Supernatural assurance concerning something God wants to do, of course, before He does it. The gift of faith has to do with the functioning God in you and through you with no human strength involved. See, here's the difference, and it's, it's splitting hairs, to be honest, and sometimes it probably doesn't matter how that faith came to you. But we have faith, but we also develop that faith. We have the measure of faith. But that has to, just like a muscle, the more we use it, the more it gets stronger, the more comfortable and confident we get. And as we take that measure of faith and we begin to pray and we see an answer, we're like, oh, wow, that worked. And and we see another answer and our faith matures and develops and we can begin to have a stronger, more confident faith. Does that make sense? The gift of faith overrides our own circuits, if you will. It's not that I've developed the faith it's not that over time and experience I have strengthened my faith. It is for this moment and this opportunity and this need, God has deposited in me supernatural faith that I am unswervingly convinced that God is going to do what God said He would do. The gift of faith. Don't you wish God would just give these to us all the time? Right? But then we would never develop faith. <laughs> For so, God is God, and He is the one, it says, who gives the gifts as He determines. I, would wish, I wish we could all just walk around with healings and miracles and supernatural faith, but God is wise. We have access to miracles, healings, and faith. But in those moments of need, God brings to us supernatural faith. There's some Old Testament examples. I can't guarantee, you know, sometimes again, we have faith, so I can't guarantee this was a gift of faith, but I'll tell you, it's what it would look like to have the gift of faith. I think about when Moses was doing the miracles uh, before Pharaoh, and, and, and dust would turn into fleas, and he would throw that staff on the ground, and it would turn into a snake, and you know it was supernatural faith to grab that snake again 
and it turns back into a staff, and the river turns into blood, and, and, he, and he just had absolute confidence to confront the world superpower pharaoh, the, the, the prime minister, the, the king, if you will, of the most powerful nation in the world, and for Moses to walk in and say, look, let my people go. Uh, God gave him faith. I think about Elisha, who did all kinds of miracles, but I think of the one where the guy was cutting wood and the axe broke and went into the, into the stream, and Elisha says, no problem. He throws a, rock in, or throws a stick in there, and the axe head floats. Just this really supernatural, miraculous faith. Uh, many of, of you have heard of a, a guy named Smith Wigglesworth. I just love his name. Uh, he was a, a healing minister. He was a plumber, and God developed and matured him into this amazing uh, man of faith. But one day he comes home, and, and he was met at the door uh, with some people that were at his house, and they said that his wife had passed away. She'd been uh, deceased for two hours. And he said, no, she's not dead. He drops his lunch pail and his tools. He walks into the bedroom, uh, pulls her out of bed, stands her against the wall, calls her by name and says, I command you, come to me. And she did. <laughs> did he have that faith? Maybe he had developed that kind of faith. But sometimes in that moment of the absolute miraculous and God just put upon his heart a, a confidence. I got to tell you, you're either totally crazy, which is possible, or you have a supernatural gift of faith to take someone who's been dead for two hours, stand them up against the wall, and say, start walking. Of course, Jesus demonstrated supernatural faith all the time. Jesus had perfect faith. Was it a gift of faith? But I think of the times where he walked down the water. I think of where Jesus looks at a storm and says, be quiet. I think of Jesus calling forth Lazarus, who was dead, and just saying, come out. And Jesus walked in this perfect confidence. Daniel in the lion's den, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So many times we see God moving uh, in things that are just beyond our human ability. To It's one thing to ask for. It's one thing to pray for. It's another thing to have absolute confidence. God's got this. Uh, I remember... Um, Many years ago now, 16, almost 17 years ago, when we bought the building in Brooklyn, uh, and I know there's miracle stories for this building. Uh, God is so good, isn't he? Uh, when we were working to buy the building in Brooklyn, the church was six months old, and the building came for sale, and, and um, we negotiated, and, and well, all right, so I, I didn't know what I was doing, just to be quite honest. So I just went and saw the realtor and made him an offer kind of didn't have authority to do that, but I did go back and get, a, get permission <laughs> and, and approval, but we had just one little problem. They accepted our offer. <laughs> it, well, then you got to like, you know, they, we got to find some money <laughs> as a six-month-old church. And, and that, so, so I talked to our, uh, some banks and talked to our district leadership in this uh, Assembly of God has a financial branch, and they said, well, we'll loan them your money, but you got to get 10% down payment, which was miraculous, uh, only 10%, which, but was going to be $40,000, $40, and um, we didn't have that. And so we, found, we got a hold of a matching grant that said, if you can raise $20,000, uh, we'll match it with $20,000, we can get this mortgage Here's the, here's the catch to it all, though. By the time we kind of figured all that stuff out, we had 21 days to, uh, to closing. Uh, so we did a 21-day fast, and uh, we didn't have time for a capital campaign or pledges. or We just said, we're going to take an offering, and we need $20,000. And so we did. And the end of the story is uh, the offering was $20,090. But here's the gift of faith that I think was happening. That should have kept me awake at night. <laughs> right? I mean, it was kind of, kind of, like, I think I was just young and naive. But honestly, in retrospect, what I think it was, was a gift of faith in operation. That it, it really was somewhat of an impossible situation. But I, I honestly never had a blink of a doubt ever. And I, that wasn't me. I don't say that I had supernatural faith. I just think that was an example where somehow in that moment, God wanted us to have that building, and God helped me as a leader to, to just know. 
the gift of faith. God can do that for you. It's provision and protection. And, and faith works with some of the other operations of the Spirit, right? Healing and miracles. Uh, and so we can develop faith. We can mature faith. We stretch our faith. We build our faith. And praise God, sometimes He gives us this gift of faith. Okay? Let's keep going. Number two, not only the gift of faith, but the gifts of healings. Gifts of healings. Uh, plural, gifts of healings. I don't get too um, tripped up by that, but really what it implies, I think, most people would agree, is that, uh, one, it's not a gift that you live with. Remember, these are momentary gifts. The gifts of the Spirit are momentary. So you don't have the gift where you can just walk around and heal at will. I wish we could. But what it does mean is God has lots of gifts of healings, and He can keep giving them. There's a lot of sickness, there's a lot of disease, there's a lot of circumstances, and God has the gift of healing for every one of those, potentially. So He can re deliver, release, utilize those gifts uh, multiple times with us. Gifts of healings. Like many of these, there's multiple ways God can bring healing. He is interested in you being well. One is, and probably the most common, to be honest, is what's called the prayer of faith. James 5, uh, is any of you in trouble, you should pray. Anyone happy, you should praise. Is anyone sick, you should call the elders of the church to pray. Anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will make the sick person well. James 5, 15, the prayer of faith will make the sick person well. So you can do that. Isn't that good news? The prayer of faith. For who? For you. Uh, so we can exercise. Now, is that we get hung up on that because, well, now you didn't, it didn't happen. You didn't have enough faith. Well, there's a lot of elements related to healing. Let me just say, I, I will say this, God wants you well. And I will say this, the prayer of faith makes the sick well. Says it right in James. I will also say this, not everybody I've prayed for has been well. And so we, we are imperfect. The person we're praying for is imperfect. God is perfect. But we know that God wants us well. We know we have access to the prayer of faith. <coughs> we know that we can step out in faith. Um, and we see that in Scripture. Matthew 9, the woman with the issue of blood presses through the crowd. you remember that? <coughs> and she touches his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? And, and they said, what do you mean it's a crowd? And finally she says, yeah, it was me. And he makes this comment, your faith has healed you. So it wasn't even exactly a prayer, but it was kind of a, an action based on faith. If I can touch, the, touch that guy, especially the hem of his garment, I will be healed. It was a step of faith. And Jesus said, your act of faith has made you well. The paralytic through the roofs, remember that? They, cut, they dig through the mud, they drop the guy through the roof, Jesus heals him, and, and it was really the faith of his friends that brought healing. Jesus certainly had faith. How many think Jesus had just a little bit of faith? But this is what I want you to think about. Matthew 4, Jesus went through Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Matthew 9, preaching the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and sickness. Acts 10, 38. Uh, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. What I want to suggest to you is that did Jesus offer the prayer of faith? I think he did. Did Jesus have perfect faith? I think he did. Did at other times God anoint him with the gift of healing so that there was masses and crowds and every single person got healed, even though their faith was imperfect? Uh, Yes, I think there was a gift of healing in operation in many of those cases where there are massive numbers of people getting healed. And the, here's the beauty of the gift of healing. Remember who gives it? God, right? So we can't make it happen. But when God gives that gift of healing, it overrides everything else. In other words, if your faith is imperfect and their faith is imperfect, it doesn't matter. The gift of healing is present. They're getting healed. That's wonderful. Uh, but since you can't make that happen, we pray the prayer of faith. We stand in faith. We step out. Let me give you a little secret, though. How many would just say, I'd love to see the gifts of healings in my life? Anybody? 
I can guarantee one thing. If you never pray for the sick, you will never see the gifts of healing. They don't show up until they're needed. We can't make them happen when they are needed, but they will never happen until we step out. And the people that seem to see gifts of healings manifest are the people who are stepping out and praying for the sick. And at times, you'll see, uh, I think of Oral Roberts, one year had 37,000 people healed. Now, was that all the prayer of faith? Could have been, but very likely when you see these huge crusades and mass numbers of people, in, in aspects of that, you're seeing a gift of healing at work. If it's John G. Lake or Benny Hinn or Smith Wigglesworth, Kenneth Hagin, what you're seeing is at least at times you're seeing a gift of healing. And here's the, what's amazing. If, I, if you recognize any of those names, maybe you're saying, well, those are heroes of the faith. Those are superstars of healing. Yes, and God said to you, eagerly desire spiritual gifts. <coughs> are you stepping out? It seems to me that those used the most in these areas of ministry are the people who are stepping out in these areas of ministry. Have I experienced this? Um, Maybe. (laughs) Some of these, like prophecy, healing, miracles, faith, they are active in the believer's life anyway. So you can pray the prayer of faith and see the sick person well. So was it my prayer of faith or was it the gift of healing? I do know I haven't, there's been lots, I'm sorry to say, there's been lots of people I've prayed for that at least in front of my face didn't seem to get healed. I will also say, praise God, there's been some people that got healed. Was it my faith or was it a gift of healing? I don't know. But what I know is when we step out, we open the door for God to either heal by the prayer of faith or to heal by the gift of healing. And I certainly know there's been times where I didn't feel like I had great faith and somehow something great happened. And so I kind of think that was probably a gift. And I say, thank you, Jesus. Are you willing to step out? We had um, probably multiples, but I had a great testimony. Rhonda messaged me this week. And uh, I'm going to ask you, maybe I'm not... I don't have the microphone out. I'll tell it. What wave? This is Rhonda. <clears throat> Rhonda messaged me this week, and at our service on Sunday night, um, there was a word, and Brother Bear got prayed for too, and, and some others, but there was a word about hip pain. And, and here's an interesting thing. So that's a gift called the word of knowledge, saying somebody has hip pain and God wants to heal it. And uh, Rhonda was up here in the, in the prayer ministry, and so she flags me over, and, and Natasha was there, and she said, hey, pray for me. I got hip pain, and that, I think that's for me. And we prayed while well, she messaged me Monday. It says, I haven't had hip pain. I've slept good, and all is healed. Isn't that good news? Now, what you know is it probably wasn't me, and it probably wasn't the word. It was Natasha. No, we don't know whose faith, but it could have been the prayer of faith. It was a word of knowledge, but how does that come to healing? Uh, I don't know, but that maybe a word of knowledge builds our faith, and maybe a word of knowledge releases a gift of healing. But all I know is usually when there's a word of knowledge related to healing, it means, hey, God wants to do this, and we should cooperate with Him. And uh, He's faithful, isn't He? I don't know why. I, I, I have suspicions. I could give you a long list of things that hinder healing, but at the end of the day, God wants you well. <clears throat> and all of us have experienced, I, th- I would imagine, where things didn't turn out perfectly exactly like you wanted them to. But don't be discouraged in thinking God's not faithful. Uh, if we step out, we can know that God supplies all that we need. So we've learned about faith. We've learned about healing. The third is miraculous powers or the working of miracles. This is something by nature, the word miracle means it's something that is not, that defies physical possibility. So Jesus walking on water, right, defies physics, turning water into wine, stopping a storm. 
uh, multiplying fish and loaves, casting out devils. These are miracles. So a healing could be germs going away. It could be an immune system being strong. There could be uh, sometimes a creative miracle involved in healing where something was missing and God grew it, right? Uh, and so a, mir- a healing is making the body well, whereas a, a miracle could, could be in many areas. It could be financial. It could be spiritual. It could be defying laws of physics. Um, it could be um, at one time I had a, a, a tractor. How many think God could heal a tractor? Lynn, I'm telling you. I, I was, it wasn't anything farming related. I was getting ready to tractor pull. And, and so you hook it to a, it's a big anchor in the floor and you spin the tires to get them all shaped right for tractor pulling. Well, it was an old 1939 antique tractor and it stalled, pulled tight on the, on the chain. It wouldn't start. So I'm like, I can't unhook it. I can't move it. I can't start it. It's bound up, and it's super tight on this chain. And, you know, after trying everything you can do, then I had this brilliant idea. Right? Pray. So I put my hands on those tires. And this is, you know, a little farm, old antique farm tractor. Prayed, be loosed in the name of Jesus, and pushed in the clutch and started right up. What is it? That's something... Not, was that... Not necessarily a gift of miraculous powers. It could have just been an answer to prayer. But what I'm saying is God can do the miraculous, defying of, of the laws of nature. Jesus did this often. He had no problem walking on water. It could be financial provision, divine protection over the enemy, power over nature, power over demons, deliverance from addiction. Uh, there, m- many of you have been free from addiction, and, and for many, that's a hard road, right? And praise God, He helps you. If it's stopping smoking or stopping drinking or stopping uh, various kinds of addiction, and sometimes, don't you wish, just like healing, sometimes addiction recovery looks like this. In the name of Jesus, be free, and you are! <laughs> that's a miracle over a substance addiction, over physical habits, over, over psychological patterns, and all of a sudden God just says, yeah, you're free. The working of miracles. Could God do that in you? You better believe it. He could answer your prayer of faith. He could give you faith. And if you're stepping out believing for the miraculous at times, God will even give that gift of miraculous power to overcome. When Jesus, ha- I think this is what was happening when Jesus had the fish and the loaves. Uh, is they, they had it, didn't have enough, and he said they broke the bread, they handed it out, and it multiplied. It was just a supernatural miracle. Could God do that for you? Yeah. Many of you. Anybody ever seen food stretched (laughs) farther than it should have? You better believe it. God still does those kind of things. Miracles over nature. Anybody ever prayed over a rainstorm? Right? You haven't bailed enough hay if you haven't prayed over a rainstorm (laughs) to go around and uh, or to hold off the working of miracles. It is the release of God's supernatural power over nature nature. I think about, uh, at least as an example, King David, before he was king, he was the shepherd. And, and we don't have a lot of details on this story, but when he's talking to, to Saul and he's getting ready to go, to go up against Goliath, <clears throat> he said, hey, God gave me victory over the lion and over the bear. <clears throat> and if you read it, it says this, I grabbed his fur and threw him on the ground. Who does that? Now listen, I, I'm, I'm thinking from what I read that David was a warrior machine, but it's still a lion. I think possibly there was a working of a miracle on David's behalf as he's protecting his sheep and God spares him and he has this supernatural ability to grab a lion by the beard and throw him on the ground and strike him down. Remember Samson? Right? He did all these miracles of strength. Jesus turns water into wine. Uh, if you understand, you know, I mean, um, no miracle is bigger than the other. Like, is that bigger than walking on water? But it, if, if you think about the, the, the defiance of nature, how about sun stands still? But Jesus takes water and that chemically changes. It adds, creates something that 
could take months or years to produce, and Jesus can transform uh, something that didn't even have, like, like wine requires organic material to ferment, and it was just pure water, so the right stuff wasn't even there. And He changes the, the molecular substance, advances something that requires a year's time, and, and produces the best wine of the day in a moment. I think that was a miraculous gift, a gift of working of miracles to provide for that moment. Now, how many know Jesus is much more qualified for that kind of stuff than you? And how many of you as teenagers prayed for water into wine? Don't. <laughs> I almost got you there. <laughs> Amen. You know, I had a friend I just talked to recently um, who's a pastor, and he was praying for at his church, praying for the sick, and six people came up, and he kind of has a ministry uh, very frequently involved with healing, so a lot of healing ministry, and five people got healed out of six. Isn't that awesome? But he's, look, he's thinking, why didn't the sixth one get healed? So kind of afterwards, he goes up and he begins to talk to this person, and she had had chronic uh, back pain for a long time. And he said, so he came back. He'd prayed for her, and she didn't receive, so he came back, and he's like, I think God wants you well, but something's not working here. Tell me, how long have you had back pain? Oh, 18 years. Wow, that's a long time to have back pain. Did anything happen? Like, were you, were you injured or anything? No, that's the weird thing. I didn't even, wasn't an injury. And, and he, he gets this kind of word of knowledge of, um, did, you lose, did you lose somebody important to you? Like, why would you ask that about back pain? But he gets this thought, and she's like, well, yeah, my, my husband. I lost my husband right before this started. He's like, well, do you have peace about that? She said, well, no, <laughs> I don't. He said, well, I think that grief has done something affected you physically. Could we pray for deliverance from that grief? And he does, and she's delivered, and guess what? The back pain was gone. Now, I, just, I tell you that story to tell you, uh, sometimes we just approach it on, on this level of, well, I prayed and nothing happened. And sometimes we need the power tools of God giving a word of saying, that's not actually nothing wrong with her spine. It was tension from chronic grief that began to manifest in physical pain. And then multiply that times years and your body just kind of gets out of whack. But you don't get to some of those solutions without a little bit of help from the Holy Spirit. And some listening and some waiting and some leaning in. And, and I, can, I can tell you this, I, so definitely what happened was a word of knowledge. I think even maybe a wisdom of how to pray, probably a, a gift of deliverance and healing, Right? But none of that would have happened had she not walked to the altar and had he not been willing to pray for the sick. And not only pray for the sick, but come back and say, I think God can help us get to the bottom of this. So could God do that for you? Yes. Can you make it happen? No. <laughs> Does it happen every single time you pray? Probably not. But could God release gifts of the Spirit in your life as you step out in ministry? Absolutely. In addition, we don't always need them. Many times, our own faith, our prayer of faith will make the sick well. Many times, our prayer for the miraculous provision will bring the needed result. Many times, God gives us the faith we need for the circumstances we face. But at times, when we're stepping out and trusting and eagerly desiring and open and yielded, God will impart for those moments gifts of the Holy Spirit to you. Not just to the pastor, not just to the evangelists, not just to the deacons. We got some awesome deacons. But to you. Eagerly desire. If you haven't been baptized, what we call baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, that's the first gift to seek. God wants you to have that, right? And following that, we become available to these gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I want to pray for you today. And um, a couple of things that I want to pray for. We're not going to take a super long time today because we are going to have 
a business meeting for a few minutes. But I don't want to just rush out, all right? I like to let the Word of God just soak for a minute in us. And um, yes, thank you, Gene. So I just want to ask this two things. One, I'm going to make a guess that if you drove on slightly slippery roads in January, um, you probably love Jesus. <laughs> But I'm just committed to always giving an opportunity. So I'm going to just ask, and maybe you're watching online, maybe you're watching a recording, maybe you got drug here by your spouse or your parents, uh, or maybe your kids drug you here, uh, and you haven't yet yielded your life to the Lordship of Jesus. There's no better day than today to start walking with Jesus. And if that's you, just, just wave at me and say, you know what, today's the day, January 29th, before we hit February, it's time to surrender. Would you pray with me, church? I always want to pray because, uh, believe it or not, there's lot, not only those present and not only those in the cafe, but there's also many uh, watching online with us. And, uh, and many re-watch re these over, over time. And so uh, I want to invite you to pray with me to surrender to Jesus and his Lordship. Let's pray out loud. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus for giving your life as a sacrifice for my sins. Today, I repent. Today, I surrender. And I invite you, Jesus, into my life to be Lord, Savior, and King. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Two things I want to do yet. I want to pray for, I'm going to close with this. I'm going to pray for us um, that want, that are open. Listen, and I always say this, and I mean it. If this is new to you, or you're just like, Pastor, I just don't know about this stuff, or it's not how I was raised, or I just got to think on this some more. That's okay. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're learning. Take your Bible, go home, re read these verses I'm talking about, pray on it. It's okay. You're welcome here. We are the body of Christ, and, and we are, we're all uh, on a different page. It's the same Bible, <laughs> but sometimes we work, we work through things as God gives revelation, as God gives understanding, as, as we surrender. So that's okay. But what I do want to say is God wants you saved. <laughs> God wants you filled with the Holy Spirit, and God wants you to be active in ministry, and he would love to help you by providing all kinds of gifts, ones that are part of our personality. Maybe you're gifted in serving or fixing things or lifting things. Come help me move, right? Maybe you're gifted in cooking things or making great music or teaching. And at times we need these spiritual gifts, these supernatural gifts of healing, miracles, faith, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, discerning, prophetic words, message in tongues. And God has those for us too. How many just say, I, I at least want to, even if I don't, I want to eagerly desire spiritual gifts. I want God to take me on a journey of learning, growing, and maturing in Him. So Lord, just help us. Lord, we, it is a journey of figuring this stuff out, of learning to cooperate, of yielding. And sometimes it's new things. Sometimes it's unknown territory. It's there's uncertainty, there's things that, that maybe we haven't experienced before or seen before or we still don't really understand. But Lord, give us a willingness to step out and to step in to all that you're doing. Uh, I believe in these last days more than ever before, we need signs and wonders and miracles. We need demonstrations of the Spirit's power. We need men and women who will step into their workplace and into the marketplace and into the living room and and step out in faith and trust you for the supernatural and so we're open and we're hungry and we're willing thank you jesus thank you, jesus. Thank you Lord. let me ask this uh I, I would be better to just have a big altar time for today because uh, we need to do some other things. I just want to pray over you. If you just say, I need to receive one of those things. <laughs> I need a miracle. I need a healing. I need faith and provision or protection. How many just say, I have a need from the Lord today? I've got good news.
God's got that. Right? My God shall supply all of your needs. So let's just take a moment. Father, I thank you that you're healer. <laughs> and we just release our faith today for these physical bodies. We decree to them, be whole and be healthy in the name of Jesus. We take authority over every over a virus of any kind. You are defeated by the blood of Jesus. You have no place in these bodies. You're trespassing on the child of God. And we just command every sickness to leave, every infection to leave. Inflammation and disease be gone in the name of Jesus. Thank you for it. Thank you, Lord. I, th I thank you for deliverance, for freedom. Lord, as I mentioned uh, addiction, I feel like somebody's, it could be big, it could be small, but there's things that are, that, are, that have a hold on our life, and we just declare over these bodies, be free in the name of Jesus. Over our minds <laughs> that, that, that hold on to those addictive patterns, be free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for protection, for provision. Lord, I pray for those that just are in a tough spot and need your, your financial provision. Lord, I thank you that you are the provider. Show them the way. Show them the way to see uh, that need answered. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And Lord, we're going to encounter people this week that have desperate needs. So I just speak an anointing over this body today that we are carriers of your anointing. We are carriers of your provision. We are carriers of your word. And as we go this week, you're going to you're going to put us face to face with people that need healing and people that need deliverance and messed up marriages and rebellious kids and broke people, financially broken people, physically broken people. And uh, I thank you that there's an anointing on our lives to bring the answer. Thank you, Lord. Give us the courage to step out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I'm going to end with this. How many of you would just agree with me? Uh, I think, now, uh, this is where we want to be. Where we want to be is, Lord, every time, every time there's an opportunity, I want to be obedient. Wouldn't that be good? But how, but how about we start here today? How many would say one time this week? That's it, just once. Seven days, 24 hours a day, uh, just one time this week, uh, I'm going to step out. All right, you show me who, Lord, if there's someone that uh, I need to help physically, financially, or prayerfully. You show me one time, one person, and I'm going to do it. Could just be a hug, could just be a word of encouragement, could be a, hey, can I tell you what God's done in my life? It could be a prayer for the sick. It could be a prayer of deliverance. But just one time this week, I'm going to obey the Holy Spirit. Okay? All right. Lord, if we just make ourselves available, give us courage, give us willingness, and give us faith to you know, just love people like you loved them. That's all. Help us love people like you loved them and be willing to step out and just offer what we have. I think about... Uh, how, uh, Paul and Timothy, I don't have silver or gold, but what I do have, I give to you. <laughs> I had faith. I have a gift of healing. I think that was a gift of healing. What I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Lord, we may not have the money. We may not have a, an answer, but what we have, may we, be, may we be willing to give in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's, we got good? So we're going to do two things. Uh, and both are going to be efficient. We're going to take five minutes. It's 12.05. We're going to take five minutes, uh, and our prayer teams will be here. So if you want prayer, we're putting you on the clock. you got five minutes. Pray fast, right? If, you need a if, you need to, if you're not a member and you're not staying, you're dismissed. If you are a member or you want to stay, you got five minutes. If you need a bathroom, if you need to stretch your legs, we'll conduct business at 12.10. God bless.